What helped me get into college was the kind of knowledge that I developed uh, doing model rocketry at the time between when I was 15 and when I applied to college. The kind of skills that you're learning on these tables right now will serve you really well. It is incredibly important, not only to you personally, but to the country, that you learn as much as you possibly can about doing things with your hands, about doing things with your mind, because that's the only way that you're going to be able to have the same kind of standard of living that your parents have. There's a lot of competition out there in the world, and if we want to be able to continue to do things that people in China can't, we're going to have to have all of you invent new things, and this is the road to get all of the skills, that whole toolbox that you folks need to go do that. And I'll tell you what, it's really worth it. When I was sitting on the launch pad on my first launch in 1991 in the space shuttle, there were five of them board. Four of us had done model rockets as kids. Okay? And the view when you get up into space is really worth it. it is, how many people have seen pictures of uh, Earth and space, other planets and stuff? It is incredibly beautiful. Being up there is so much fun, I can't touch it. It is wonderful. Every single person here was totally the water. It is the best thing you can possibly do look out the window at the Earth from up there. And I took into space the first model rocket in orbit. <laughs> when I came back, I gave it uh, to a fellow who invented the uh, engines of the type that you're uh, using here this, uh, yeah. uh, this weekend. <coughs> so, what I'd like to do is to, if you have interest, uh, talk about. Is it fun floating around? It is incredible floating around. The question was, is it fun floating around? There, you know, there are some things that floating around makes harder, right? All this stuff that you've got on the table that you use to work on your models, that would all be floating around too. So, you know, what you have to do is take a piece of tape and turn it over and make a double sticky piece and put it on the wall or the ceiling or wherever you're working and put your parts on there, your screwdrivers even and everything that you're working on. So, some things take longer, but a lot of it is so much fun, it's amazing. Go ahead. Um, when you were doing like some work ready so down, would you, could you do it on the ceiling? Oh yeah, I like to sleep on the ceiling as a matter of fact. That's where I like to eat dinner. <laughs> you know, there was a thing up there like this thing and you just kind of wrap your legs around it and it's wonderful. It's great. Yeah. Do you like the astronaut food? You know, I like the astronaut food. You know, most of the astronaut food that I had was the same food that you get when you're in the military out uh, on uh, patrol. MREs, meals ready to eat. And they weren't bad. They were really pretty good. Uh, and we had three types of foods up there. Those things, which you reheated in the oven. Stuff that you put water in, like instant oatmeal, instant coffee. Uh, and the third was what was called natural form, which is stuff like M&Ms and tortillas and stuff. So it was pretty good. It really was. And actually, Commander Kirby, we had here last uh, fall. And he's going into space in 2006. And he said, the food's getting better. They get to pick out at all the entire menu for every day, every meal, and each astronaut gets to select and taste the foods ahead of time so that you can see if you like it or not and how it's going to be prepared. So it's improving all the time. But it's probably a little better than when you went. No, it was pretty good. Was it? The same, same system. It was the, the selections that you had were up and down uh, depending on what the military was buying. Yes? Don't you get sick from singing? You don't get any sickness in the simulators at all. Uh, except, you know, sometimes you're sick of the number of hours you spend in them, training and stuff. But no, you don't get sick in the simulators. It's that's fun. Yes. Um, how, um, is there like ovens in the spaceship? There is an oven, but it's different than the oven you have here. You know, in the oven you have here, you just set something in the middle of the oven, and the whole oven gets hot. Hot air rises from the uh, burning down the bottom. Hot air doesn't rise up there. There's no rise to do, you know. And so what you have to do is make the wall of the oven hot, and you have a springy plate of uh, metal that pushes your uh, pouch of material in your MRE, your meal ready to eat, down against the hot side of the oven. And that's how uh, you cook your food. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, what are you guys doing every day here in the sun? 
Okay, so we don't get nearer the sun much than the Earth does. The shuttle flies at most 330 miles above the Earth. So it's about the same. Now, you do get more sunlight up there, so you're careful. Especially, you get more ultraviolet rays. Okay? So you've got to be real careful to protect your eyes. Uh, and the windows on the shuttle don't let some of the UV through, but some of it does get through. So you do have to be careful from that, because you don't have the Earth's atmosphere to protect you. That's a good question. Uh, the lady in the corner has a question. Oh. Uh, when Robert Bean was here, he said that you do have some aches and pains, because you do stretch three inches. Is that true? No, you stretch about an inch. About an uh, inch. Most people do. Now, for me, you know, being as short as I am, that's a good deal. Uh, <laughs> but for people who are six foot, they often get lower back pain because the ligaments stretch. I never had any of that. I really didn't. But when you get off the shuttle, then it goes right there, right? Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. I used to be a lot taller, and then I started flying with Navy pilots and Marine pilots, a lot of Bob Kirby, and they make these landings like this. You know? How shaky is the takeoff? It is unbelievable. Who's the biggest person in the room? You. All right. So let's get a hold of the kids. Let's get a hold of the kids. Uh, okay. Now, I want you to stand right by him. Okay. Now, I want you to take her and shake her just as hard as you can. <laughs>
When you're floating around and you stand and you're on the wall eating or something, does it feel like upside, feeling like you're upside down on the earth, or does it feel like you're sitting the right way? It feels like you're sitting just the right way. It's really cool. I like it. Oh, does your ears pop when you go through the atmosphere? No, because your ears pop. No, because the pressure in the shuttle stays the same. It's just the same as the pressure in the room. You get a sense of speed at liftoff and how many G's do you encounter? You get a sense of speed at liftoff, especially if you, you have a mirror down here so that you look out the overhead windows. And we threw a, flew through a cloud, for example, on the, my fourth flight. We were going out. That cloud got small really, really quick. <laughs> um, the other thing that's really neat about it is during all that shaking that was going on, you can feel how big the ship is. And the, Feel in your bones that it's something that big that is going that fast. That's pretty cool. Oh, you pull three G's, Max. Okay. Well, how many of you uh, built models today? Good job. That's the way to do it. Take as much school as you can and enjoy life. Working hard is fun and occasionally gets really great. Enjoy. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry.